Good morning, church. We are so excited to welcome you here this morning in person. And if you're joining us online, um, I would like to ask you to stand together if you're able and join me in prayer this morning. God, we come to you thankful to be here worshiping together. We come with open hearts to receive your message and love as we enter this season of Thanksgiving together. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us and will continue to do for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You 
We just want to welcome you again this morning, and I'd like to invite you to greet your neighbors.
And all God's people said, amen. Have a seat. Um, if you'll, I'm sure none of you have noticed things look a little different up here this morning. Um, Min Lee, who usually stands over here, um, has been at Camp Glisten since Friday afternoon with a bunch of students and some other adults. They're on their way back from the fall retreat for our student ministry. They had a great weekend. Everything was, was awesome. Um, so just be in prayer for them on their travels back, um, that everything goes okay, and that um, what these students um, got this weekend at this fall retreat, that it doesn't stay at Camp Glisson, that they bring it home with them and then take it out into the community. So we'd be in prayer for that. Um, but I want to thank Tiffany Goodman for coming in this morning and help lead. Thank you, Tiffany. It's always great to have T Tiffany here um, leading and singing. I love it. And um, Josh Stam agreed to um, kind of be the, uh, the musical leader this morning. Um, so, yeah, man, you did a great job. T t claim it. Don't, don't. Um, uh, so, I want to thank all of them. Uh, Bill Swisher. Where'd Bill go? He, like, ran. Um, Bill Swisher, Bill Riabuto, um, Will Ellis, um, who I'm sure is somewhere eating donuts, um, and, uh, and for, for coming in and, and um, making sure everything goes well with music, um, even with, you know, people. This, is, this, this speaks volumes of our volunteers and their hearts and the ability that they have up here. So thank you guys for doing that this weekend with, with men and Julie both gone. Um, welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. Um, thank you for coming in to worship with us and praise Jesus this morning. If you're with us in person, it's great to see all your beautiful, smiling, loving faces this morning. Um, I hope most of you are in a better mood after yesterday's football games than me. Um, Josh, I know, man, I feel you. I had a rough day. My hogs, Arkansas lost to Liberty by two points. Um, and then um, Alabama, man, I had LSU, to lose the LSU just hurts. Um, so that was 0 for 2 yesterday. Um, yeah, I heard you. Um, I was hoping both of those teams would lose yesterday, but since that wasn't possible, that orange is ugly. So I had to take the, the lesser. I'm sorry, Tennessee fans, but I don't like that orange, so I had to take the lesser of two evils. And I did actually pull for Georgia yesterday. So um, only because it was, what was the choice? What was the choice? There wasn't one. Um, so anyway, if you're with us today, grab those black pads on the end of each row. Fill them out. Let us know you're here. If you're online watching, we're glad you're with us today. Um, go. There's a link underneath. Hit that online registra attendance registration. Fill out that form. Let us know you're with us today. Um, that would be awesome. Um, just so we know you're watching with us. Leave a comment if you would like to, um, as long as it's nice. Um, that would be great. Um, we got a lot to do today. So um, hang with me. I might be zipping through some things. I told my daughter, and she just laughed at me. I said, I am going to be no rabbit trails, nothing today. I am on target all day long. So um, next week, next Sunday, November 13th, is a very important day in the church. Um, and it's kind of a Sunday that, that um, uh, we, sometimes we don't like talking about, but we can't do without it. Um, it's Consecration Sunday next week. Um, uh, as a new Christian, when I was in my mid-20s, I called it Commitment Sunday. Um, it's that Sunday when we turn in our cards and make our pledge for our giving for the next year um, in the life of the church, um, Consecration Sunday. Um, and you can do it several ways. You can bring it in next Sunday. We'll have some things set up, and we'll, we will pray over the, the, the pledges, and you can drop them in the baskets next week. You can do it online. That's the easiest way to do it, DuluthUMC.org, and then you can hit the giving tab, and it'll take you there, and you can do it that way. That's the easiest, quickest way. So we invite you to do that. You have seen the last two weeks this yellow piece of paper. And I want to I want to kind of as leading up to consecration Sunday next week I kind of want to go over this what it is because we get it every year and and people look at me like why are you handing me this yellow piece with stair steps on the back of it why why are you doing this this thing this grow one step chart is what we call it here at Duluth First United Methodist Church is very important and I want you to understand this as you prayerfully consider your giving to God and the church next week 
or if you've already done it, you can go in and amend it if prayerfully you decide to change your mind. And if you're visiting with us, either online or here in person, um, we just ask your patience for a minute. Um, we, this is some church housekeeping that we have to do. So um, on the front of this Grow One Step, you'll see this chart of dollar amounts. What this tells us is your household income over here on the left side as you look at it, and then percentages all the way across to 10%. Okay, so for instance, if you make, um, a math is not my strong suit, $100,000 uh, for your home, I'm just picking a number, and 1% uh, of that is $1,000 a year, 10%, $10,000 a year, or anywhere in between there for the percentages. And you can work that for any dollar amount that your household income is. What we're asking you, the reason we call this Grow One Step, what we're asking, you know, hear us talk about it all year long, is to take one step up in your giving, one percentage step up in your giving. So if you are giving 6% now, we, we, we think prayerfully consider going to 7% of your income. Um, that's why we call it Grow One Step. Um, it, is, it is not necessarily this thing on the back we'll get to in a minute but one percentage more than what you gave this year. And I've shared this with you before. When Joanna and I were first married, giving was not. I didn't know what it was. I didn't, wasn't, wasn't raised in the church. Um, we didn't start at 10%. We didn't just get married and join St. Timothy United Methodist Church in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and say, okay, we're immediately giving 10%. It's not what happened. We worked our way up this, this percentage, and we worked our way up, grow one step, is how we got to where we are, and we would ask all of you to consider that. On the flip side, on the back, grow one step. This is just a summary of all the giving units in Duluth First United Methodist Church. By giving unit, that may be a family. Joanna and I give together, so we are one giving unit. If you give separately, that would be two giving units. The number of giving units in Duluth First United Methodist Church, and how many of those giving units give at each dollar amount range for the year. Okay, does that make sense? You all understand that? Um, so the grow one step is percentage. And then you can look back here and see where our, our giving units are giving in the church. Okay, questions about this sheet. And prayerfully... As you prepare to make your pledge next week, prayerfully consider this grow one percentage, grow one step as you consider that for next Sunday. Okay? Everybody good with that? And Ken Willie puts this together every year, and we thank him for getting it up here and in our hands here. Uh, as we proceed, um, that leads us into, I, I would ask those that are assisting with our offering this morning to come forward, um, and this, what we pledge next week, then we use that to set the budget and expenses for next year to do ministry and missions in our community, in Duluth, Lawrenceville, Suwannee area, and beyond, and all the things we do as a church in God's name. Does that make sense? So that's why then we do what we do here. So as we prepare to continue our worship through our giving, would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, this morning we just ask you to bless these gifts that we so um, give back to you as our act of worship. And we thank you for your generosity towards us. And we would ask that you bless each heart and bless each gift for the furtherment and expansion of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, this morning we ask all of this in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. As we pass our baskets. Are there any prayer concerns that we would like to raise this morning? I mentioned our student ministry on their fall retreat. We want to keep them in our prayers. Anything else? Miss Eileen. Jessica Bell, um, Teresa Bell's daughter, Pat Pepper's granddaughter, uh, was in a car accident this morning. So we, can't, we don't know. That's all I know right now, okay? Um, she got rear-ended, but we don't know injuries or anything like that. So we just want to keep Jessica in our prayers. Um, any others? Um, yeah, Miss Tiffany. Grandpa, um, Tiffany's grandfather, we keep him in our prayers. Any others? I want to, um, I hate doing this 
but I'm going to raise it up anyway because I think it's super important. And I don't want to go down a road we don't want to go down to, but I think Tuesday, we need to keep um, Tuesday in our prayers. I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. It doesn't matter to me. That's your business. Um, but Tuesday is a very important day, and I hope everybody exercises your right to vote. Um, and we just pray for wise decisions and wise leadership, and would God be in the whole process. Um, which I think God needs to be a whole lot more involved. Not that he's not. We allow God to be a whole lot more involved in everything that's going on. Does that, did I say that right? Better than what I started to say it. <laughs> Bill. I'm getting there. Yep. I'm, okay. So we'll go there right now. Um, Veterans Day is coming this week, and we celebrate Veterans Day. We're going to keep all those in our prayers. Um, but are there any veterans here today? I would ask you to stand up and let us recognize you. If you're a veteran of armed, armed services in this. We thank you for your service um, and all that you have done. Um, so remember that this week. As I think it's Friday, if I'm not mistaken, um, this week, if you remember our veterans on Friday. And thank you guys for your service. Any other prayer concerns? Let's pray. Gracious, loving God, we just ask you this morning to um, be with all those concerns that we have raised today um, with Jessica Bell, with um, Tiffany's grandpa with um, our voting Tuesday, that you would be right smack in the middle of all of that, um, that you would be with our student ministry as they return home from fall retreat at Camp Glisten. And men, Lee and Julie Hall and Will Marvel and Julie Riabuto, who all gave up their weekend to go be with our kids. And um, all the other concerns that we bring with us that we just, we don't talk about, we don't raise, um, but you know what they are. And would you be with all of those. And um, we thank you for the joys and the celebrations that we are able to, to um, just joyously celebrate here. Lord, we ask would your presence overflow this place this morning and would you overflow each heart and knock on each heart and may we, each and one of us, respond to your Holy Spirit this morning. May we come face to face with you and encounter you this morning. Would you bless the reading and the hearing of your word and speak to each of us exactly what it is we need to hear this morning. Lord, we ask all of this to name today in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. So um, bear with me this morning. Um, for the longest time, I didn't like today. This particular Sunday, it just seemed weird to me that we're in the middle of stewardship campaign and next, um, next Sunday is uh, Consecration Sunday. And it's been this way at just about every church I've ever served in or, or attended before I was in ministry that we're, we're, we're almost through stewardship campaign and then right in the middle of stewardship campaign comes All Saints Sunday. And it's just, to me, it just seems weird. And, and I didn't like it for the longest time. I didn't understand it. I mean, how do we, how do we take, how do we talk about giving and um, remembering the, our loved ones that have passed away over the last 12 months? How do we do that all together in the same service? And I didn't like it. And it just, especially when I went into ministry and then had to start kind of figuring out how to, how to make that connection. And I, I didn't like it. Um, so I'm just, it's it just, it's weird to me. And so today, if you'll bear with me, we're not going to try to make that connection. We're, we're, we're going to talk about giving, okay? And we've talked about it some. And we're going to talk about generosity. And we're going to talk about something that I've talked about the last two weeks. This is heart. This is, an, uh, this is heart. Yeah, does it affect our pocketbook and does it affect our checkbook? Yes, but it's our heart. And if our hearts change and grow and transform more into the likeness of Jesus, then the checkbook and the debit card and the wallet and everything else, that's not an issue. Um, so bear with me today. This, and, and then we're going we're gonna to have a very special moment. 
with our candles and those that have lost loved ones over the year. Um, and I, and, and this is one thing about this Sunday that, man, do I cherish. I cherish this that we get to do on All Saints Sunday and allowed to be, you allow us to be part of your relationship with your loved ones and the loved ones of the church that have gone across the River Jordan. And now they sit at the right hand of Jesus. You know, and they, they worship and they praise all day long and they're healed and they don't hurt and they don't cry. And, and there's a lot of days that I'm like, I'd trade places with them real quick. Just some things. Our world today, this is, it, it, the days are becoming more frequent where I'm like, take me. What Paul say? To live is Christ, to die is to, to, to gain. Man, I get to be with Jesus. So we're going to kind of talk about that today. I want to read you a, a scripture from 1 Thessalonians um, that we're just going to kind of dive into a little bit this morning. From the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, verses, we're going to start with verse 13. And Apostle Paul says this, he says, but we do not want you to be, he's talking to the people of Thessalonica and in the church there. He says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Paul says, we don't want you to be confused. We don't want you to be uninformed. We don't want you to be ignorant about this, about the people who fall, that, that fall asleep that is dead. They have died. And then Paul goes on, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of God for the people to, of God. Thanks be to God. Buckle up, folks. Here we go. This world, I, I mentioned it. And one of the reasons why it's becoming more frequent that I kind of look to Jesus and say, just take me now. Just, I, I'm, I'm just over it. Just take me now. Um, there are days that I feel that way. Why? Because I look around me. I look around me in person. What I read in the news. I don't watch news on TV, folks. I refuse. I, I get some stuff on my chosen, and, and I kind of read it. But I read the news. I watch people around me. I see what's going on. I hear things. I hear my daughter teaches fifth grade, and I, she brings home things that she talks about. And I'm going, what in the world is going on? And what I've noticed and what I see in general, to me, this world right now, we are in a serious shortage and a lack of hope to me. I just see a lot of people who have lost hope. For whatever reason, whatever's happened in their life, they just don't see anything to place their trust in. And I just see in the world this whole lot of mess. I'm not smart enough to, to say big words of what I see. I see a whole lot of mess in the world today. I see a whole lot of despair of people who, who just cannot see beyond just being overwhelmed. I see a whole lot of frustration with things in their lives and they don't know how to react or how to deal with it and they lash out in ways then they just see frustration everywhere, all ages. Especially after, and I'm not, look, I don't want to go down, 
especially after coming out of COVID. And, and, and all the, oh, just the nastiness that was involved in all of that. Even still, I see a lot of anger at each other. I see a lot of hatred. And it seems like it's being celebrated. Everywhere we look, anger and hatred is being pushed on us. Everywhere we look. And it just seems that there's this whole lot of hopelessness. A whole lot of people that we know without any hope left. And I know for some reason we, we don't like to talk about him too much in church. It's like if we talk about him then he becomes too real. But I think Satan's greatest hope, I think Satan's greatest hope in our world is to make sure that we don't have any hope. I think if Satan had his way, each and every one of us, he would find a way to say, I'm taking your hope away and you have it no more. I mean, that's just me, maybe. We have a lot of stuff, right? We have money. And I know, look, you may look at me and say, David, I'm struggling to put food on the table. I'm struggling, whatever. I, you know what? If you're living in this country, you're in the top 1% of people in the world. We have money. We, we, we have stuff, right? We, we, we drive, for the most part, we drive nice cars. We have houses. We have roof overhead. We have food on the table. We go out to eat every once in a while. We do whatever. We buy our kids things. We go on vacations. We have all this nice stuff. We have technology, right? We got our phone. Every year, Apple comes out with a new iPhone, and people rush to the Apple store and trade in their iPhone 14 for the iPhone 15. And, and, and then Apple says, well, you bought a new one, so we're changing the charging mechanism. So now you got to buy a new cord and everything. Right? We have, we have technology. We've got laptops. Look, when I, you know when I got a cell phone? When I was 31 years old. Because Joanna was pregnant, I worked on a golf course outside, outdoors, was not in an office. Caitlin was breech, and I was afraid something was going to happen, and she couldn't get hold of me, so I got a cell phone. There was, no inter there was no internet on that phone. If we texted, oh, remember this, Will, Will Ellis is going to go, <laughs> I got no idea what you're talking about. You had, if, you wanted to, if you wanted to send something with a C, you had to hit the A button three times. That was a C. You had to hit the one button three times. So if you, if you, you know, you had to hit do, do, do for C. So as you were, <laughs> Tiffany, <laughs> that's how we texted, right? It took 10 minutes to text a two-sentence text. And you, pay, you didn't text because you had to pay an arm and a leg for the ability to do it. So we've got technology. We can stay connected, right? I just told you that's how I get my knees. We've got all that stuff. We've got sports. I just told you I had a rotten day yesterday in college football. I'm glad some of you had a great day, okay? But I did not. But still, World Series last night, with all this stuff going on, we, we, we lose our, some of us lose ourselves in sports. My wife loses herself in, did y'all know? Not only now does Hallmark have a whole 14 months of Christmas movies. <laughs> Joanna's back there going only three. It seems like 14. Not only does Hallmark have 14 channels of TV, so does GAC Network have 14 months of Christmas movies. And now, what was the new one? Lifetime, Lifetime now has 14 months of Christmas. And they're all different. And they're good. Who said they're good? <laughs> so... We lose ourselves, right? I lose myself in sports. I saw a commercial last night, and I'm going, i got to check out how much that cost. ESPN Plus so I can get NHL Power Play so I can watch hockey from everywhere. How much would that cost me? But we lose ourselves in sports. We lose ourselves in Christmas movies or in July of all things, but, okay, or other things. We lose ourselves in, in whatever. But we've got the way to do that, entertainment. Okay? People were going crazy last week, the week before, Taylor Smith, uh, Taylor Swift puts out new CD, right? Everybody goes nuts. My daughter's in the back going, yeah. Okay? 
we've got that stuff, music. And we got, look, we, we, we cut the, the cable cord. We're streaming. We do YouTube TV. There's 40 million channels on there. If you, and we still can't find anything to watch. Right? So we've got all these things we can lose ourselves in. And if, we, if, we, if we're not going to be there or two things are more important, we hit record so that we don't miss it. Then we go back and watch it. So we have to cut my football off to turn to the Christmas movie, recording. We have a lot of things, but it seems like as a culture, as a world, our hope is fading away. Right? We've got a lot of stuff in our lives, but it seems like hope is becoming less and less and less a part of our lives for so many people. So I want to do this. I want to say, what is hope? How do we define hope if that's what we're talking about today? How do we define hope? I'll give you two definitions this morning, and I really like both of them, okay? But I read somewhere that hope is an acronym. Hanging on with patient expectation. H-O-P-E. Forget with. We're not going to deal with the W. Just hanging on with patient expectation. Okay? You're re expecting something good to happen in the future. You're patiently waiting for something good, but it's more than just a wish, like, man, I really wish that this would happen. No, it's more than that. You're, you're, you're banking on it. it the, the hope we're talking about is a certainty that no matter what's going on in your life or how you're overwhelmed, that you're going to get through it. No matter how hard your life is right now or what bad things are happening to you, you keep hanging on. You don't give up. You're patient. You're expecting something good to come your way. And then secondly, Desmond Tutu says this, said this, hope, God, I love this. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Let me read that to you again. I love this quote. I wish I would have found it early enough for Ken to get it on the screen. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. How awesome is that? And as soon as I read that, I go, boom, light bulb. I don't do this very often, but I actually had a moment. Isaiah 9 the people who walked in darkness have seen a great, what, Herb? Light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy, joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. Our text today from 1 Thessalonians should give us a great deal of hope. And it was looked at, it was prophesied from hundreds of years before, from the great prophet Isaiah. And the Apostle Paul gives us hope beyond measure this morning, especially for those of us who have lost loved ones, especially if that loss is recent and it's still raw in the midst of what can be one of the most hopeless of situations, Paul tells us that God gives us hope in the darkness, that we can hang on with great and patient expectation. So what does Paul tell us that brings us so much hope? He says we don't want you to be ignorant about what's happening and what has happened and as I look, I, I mentioned our world today, and there seems so much desperation and frustration and anger and hatred and all of this stuff. And I look around you, and I see in our culture today, there is a lack of Jesus, at least to me. And I had this discussion, and pardon me, I'm going to, we had this discussion in Sunday school this morning. What is wrong in our world that if everybody followed Jesus that couldn't be solved. Two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and your soul, and love your neighbor as Jesus loved you. Wouldn't that solve? And yet today's culture does everything they can in so many ways to keep Jesus out of everything. 
And I just see more and more people. The numbers tell us the number of people who identify as Christian is decreasing every decade in the United States. And the people who identify as our life is is usually affected by the presence of Jesus in our home. That number declines also every decade. Our culture, I think Paul's talking about, our culture in a lot of ways, Paul is saying, you the ignorant, I don't want you to be deceived. And then he goes on and grieve at the loved ones. We don't want you to have, in, have no hope. We want you to have hope that we have. And here's the solution Paul gives the very next verse. We believe. We believe. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For those who that believed in Jesus Christ, they are with Jesus. They're your loved ones that have gone over to be home with Jesus. Those that believed in him now rest in him every single day. And I can guarantee you they are full of joy. And here's what we see Paul telling us. Not only do they rest with Jesus in joy, they're going to come back with Jesus. And when they do, we will see our loved ones again in Christ. We will meet them in the clouds, and we will live with them forever. God never meant for us to live on this earth permanently. This was never meant to be our home. Our home is in heaven with Jesus. God sent us his son so that when our time on earth is done, we will then live with him in eternity. With him and our loved ones. The rest of that passage from Isaiah tells us exactly where our hope comes from. Listen to the rest of it. For to us a child is born. Who is that child? Jesus Christ. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Our culture offers us many things, but it is not full of hope. Our culture does not know how to process the death of a loved one. Our culture doesn't know how to deal with life that is getting challenging and difficult. But our God offers a solution to all of these things. Hope. All capitals, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Biblical hope. A light in the darkness to knowing something good is coming. In Christ we have our hope. In the resurrection, Christ is victorious and we share in that victory with him. We believe that Jesus dies, he died, and he rose again. And so we have hope. We have hope, victory over death. We have hope of eternal life. But here's the thing. We can't keep this to ourselves. We cannot keep this hope to ourselves. The world needs it too much to keep it to ourselves. Gracious and loving God, this morning we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And above all, we thank you for knowing that we would be overwhelmed, knowing that we would grieve over the loss of loved ones, knowing that when things got difficult, we would need hope. And you provided hope through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And as we come to rest in you, May we feel your presence in all we say and all we do. In the name of your precious son. Amen. We, we are go- I invite um, Linda Wetlaufer to come up and Casey Burchett, if you'll come forward. And we're going to remember the loved ones that we have lost over the last year. Um, and here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to read a name. And Linda's going to ring the chime, and Casey's going to light a candle. And um, when we're done, we have 20 names. 
that we are aware of. And when we're done with those 20, I will open the floor up. And if you have lost a loved one you would like a candle lit for, please raise that name. And when all of those names are um, spoken, we will light the big white candle uh, over here. Um, so everybody kind of good with that. Um, and then we'll say a prayer at the end. All right, Ken, you got names on the screen? Lester Apley. I invite you, if any of these people are a huge part of your life, I would invite you to stand when we read these names, if you would like to. Montine Beasley. Tom Beasley. Bill Denny. Michelle Denny. Joyce Fallon. Cheryl Farmer. Dottie Hahn. Ron Hawker. Andy Hill. Gwen Jones. Barbara Keel. Catherine Knox. Ed McMillan. Bernard Robertson. Murdy Sites. Mary L. Smith. Teddy Tennell. Ray Walker. Herb Waterhouse. Are there any more that you would like to add this morning? Rick Barrientos. What was the last name, Sharon? Peggy McCauley. Um, a nurse, Tiffany is a nurse, if you didn't know that, um, the patients that she has lost this year. Cora Culpepper, Michael Hopkins' mother. I got you, Joyce. Debbie Hughes Eford. Debbie Hughes Eford. Joanna? Hold, hold on a minute, please. <laughs> Sorry. Peggy Amy. I'm sorry, Sharon. Amy Grossman Green.
Any others? Dwight Ginn. Dwight Ginn. Lee. Louise Stribling. Wes. Dave Ennis. Dave Ennis. Any others? Casey, would you like this camera over here? Oh, no. Lord, we give thanks for all of you, all of those who have left this world and gone home to be with you. And we rejoice that they are now with you, healed and celebrating and full of joy and hope every day. Lord, I would ask that you be with those that are left here, that we mourn and we grieve. But would you give us hope? Lord, be with all these that we have called today, all the families, the relatives, the loved ones. We ask that you wrap each of us up in your loving arms. We ask this this morning in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. This morning, we celebrate the Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. And as they gathered that night to share a final meal together, we remember and we celebrate that. We also recognize that we, as broken people, have sinned. And we look to Jesus for forgiveness. And we rest in his death on the cross that did the work we cannot do so that we may be reconciled with God. And on that night when they met for their final supper, as they gathered around the table and they prepared to share their last meal, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for those in payment of sin. And take and eat of this whenever you gather in remembrance of me. And when the dinner was over, he took the cup and blessed it and said, drink of this, the blood of the new covenant poured out for all in the forgiveness of sins. And every time you gather and every time you drink, drink this in remembrance of me. God, this morning as we gather and come to your table, we would ask that in the great mystery that you would take this bread and this juice and make it the blood and the body of your son Jesus Christ for us, for the forgiveness of sins. And may we look to you that we die with your son and we rise again in his victory. Full of hope and trust in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite those who are coming to assist with communion this morning to come forward and the band, please.
as we partake in the Lord's Supper this morning, I invite you, if you would like to, you can leave on this table an extra offering this morning for our member assistance fund that we use for members of the church or close relatives that need some help in meeting whatever the needs may be. And that fund relies on you to keep it going. So this morning, if you would like to, you can leave it on the table or at a later date, you can write a check made out to the church and member assistance fund and it will be credited to there. So now we invite you forward as you feel called.
I would invite you, if you've been visiting with us either in person or online and would like to, to join the body of Christ here at Duluth First Methodist Church, if you're here, come forward during this last closing song. If you're online, we would ask that you contact Reverend Beth Shugart, whose information should be on the screen, and she will make sure that gets taken care of. So now I invite you to stand as you are able and join us in our closing song this morning.
have a, have a seat real quick. Um, if you didn't get a Sunday supplement, I, I urge you to get one on your way out. Um, everything's in here. And also, in addition, not if you want to, but in addition, go to the website, DuluthUMC.org, um, where everything that's going on is listed there. A couple of brief things I want to mention um, today, Don't again, to next Sunday, Consecration Sunday. So um, prayerfully be ready for that next Sunday. Hey, Sarah. We got seventh graders interrupting our service out in the hallway back from the fall retreat. So <laughs> um, those are my people. I'm sorry, but I've been doing youth ministry for how long, Joanna? One form or another, over 30 minutes so, or 30 years. So love those kids. Um, seems like 30 minutes. Um, if you got a shoebox for Operation Christmas Child, next Sunday's the deadline. Make sure you get that turned in next Sunday. In addition, next Sunday is Bundle Up for Buffalo in the Fellowship Hall. Um, all kinds of stuff for sale. This fundraiser that we help uh, pay the heating bill of our sister church, Seneca Street UMC in Buffalo, New York. Um, all kind of great stuff there at Bundle Up for Buffalo. Um, so that's what's going on. There's no youth group tonight because um, the people that were on the retreat are too tired um, as adults to come in and mess with teenagers tonight. So um, no youth tonight. Um, anything else that I'm forgetting? I'm sure there is, but we're, we're, th that's it. So if you would stand as you are able and join in our benediction this morning. We will need to stack chairs this morning. So if you could help with that, that would be greatly appreciated. As we go forth from this place, may we go with people that are assured of hope. Assured of hope in Christ. And may we share that hope and that love with the world who so needs it right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love y'all. Have a great week.